Okay, so then we'll start the delivery first lecture. Um, it will be about uh, filtering. And uh, we are going to talk about um, um, filtering, smoothing, or removing noise. This kind of operation is very important when you want to analyze images. And um, we will discuss uh, this notion of convolution or correlation, which is a very important concept which uh, we will be using a lot in computer vision. And um, then the derivatives, image derivatives. You know, you have learned in calculus that you can find the derivative of a function. Um, uh, you can integrate a function. Now here you will see that you can find the derivative of an image and will have some useful information. Okay? And uh, we will learn uh, uh, the concept of what is called histogram um, and some MATLAB functions. Okay? So um, just to start the general um, concept, so this is an image and this is called binary image because each pixel here is 0 or 1, black and white or 0 or 255. 0 is black and 255 is white. This is a more simple image. And this is a grayscale image. Here, each pixel is between 0 and 255. When 0 is black, 255 is white. And this is a color image. So actually, we have three images here, red, green, and blue, and we are going to talk about that. So if you look at an image, it's a matrix of numbers, OK? It has uh, P columns and Q rows, OK? Row number one two, three, four, up to Q rows, and then we have these columns. So now each element in this array has a gray level, and uh, that gray level in this case is 0 or 1. It's a binary, OK? So that's what we have, that you know, we'll take a, one row from here, maps to here, then another row maps to here, and so on. So that's some basic notion. Um, now, gray level image is same. The only difference is that we will have numbers from 0 to 255. As you see, that um, we um, have these um, this bar showing the um, these intensities. So 0 is here, and 255 is here, which is completely white. Okay. So then. We can see also a gray level image is a color channel. Suppose we can see there's a red, but this is still a gray level image. Now the real um, color images is like this. And this color image has three channels, blue channel, the green channel, and red channel. So every pixel has three numbers. And each number is from 0 to 55. Yeah? You have a question? OK. Um, so when we see this, you know, we are actually looking at these three uh, different uh, channels, and that's why the, the color image is expensive. It requires more memory as compared to the black and white image, okay? And uh, so the first uh, important property of an image is called image histogram. So this histogram will give you a distribution of these pixels with different gray levels. And um, these gray levels, as we talked about, there are you know, 0 to 255, which are shown here, 0 and then 255. And um, then on the y-axis, we have the how many pixels are there for that particular gray level. So suppose if you look at 50, there are these many levels and these many pixels in this image. If you look at another value, say 100, these many in this. So it is looking at the, the frequency of each of the gray level from 0 to 55. We count how many pixels are there and give you a histogram. It gives you a distribution, give you an idea, the global property of an image. And it will be very useful property, which we are going to use then these are called bins. So we have actually 255 bins. And we can have fewer bins, like we can 
have one bin from 0 to 50, another bin from 51 to 100, and so on. So we will kind of group these different um, numbers in those bins. And these are called histogram bins. Okay? So now, you know, say let's say you want to write a program, small code in C to compute a histogram of an image. And it's pretty simple because you're going to scan the image from row to every row, then within row, each column, and just count. Say, so, well, what's the gray level here? You go to that array. So it's, histogram will be a one-dimensional array. As you see, it's a one-dimensional function. The image is two-dimensional. Okay, so this will be a simple code to compute a histogram of the image. You go through the loop, you know, i is equal to 0 to less than m, uh, j is 0 to n, and then you go to the image is i, go to that particular location, look at the grade level, and go to that particular index and histogram, increment by 1. It's a very simple code, basically one line code with two loops. So that's the histogram. <clears throat> and now if you are using the uh, MATLAB, and this is the MATLAB, it's image, m hist, image hist, it will give you the histogram. So you don't have to write a code. Okay, so it's uh, going to be fun. Now, <clears throat> what happens then when you take an image by a camera, even though these days are the quality of cameras is improving significantly, but even old days was, you know, not that good. But there are some factors which impact the quality of images. Um, there's light variations and um, camera electronics, some lenses, some analog things, and surface reflectance, you know, if the surface is not smooth and so on. So that will, and then the lens distortion, if the lens is not good, all those will generate a noise in an image. So image, you know, which you should get. Ideally, you will, won't get, but you will get a noisy image, okay? So ro random, the noise is actually random. That's why it's called noise, which means we don't know which pixel will have a noise and how much that will be. Uh, if we know, then it's not a noise, okay? So. So when it's a random, then it will have some distribution. We can only talk about what is the distribution of noise, but we don't know exactly what that number is. So we will know maybe the mean and, and the standard deviation of the distribution. So we'll have that kind of noise, okay? And um, so it has a distribution. So let's say, you know, the image, uh, original image is IXY, that's true pixel values. But then there's a noise due to all those factors I talk about, variation of illumination, the lens distortion, reflectance, and all those things. So at every pixel, randomly, noise is added, and that's why it's called edited noise. So we'll take the IXY, the original, and add the noise, and then what we observe is I hat, okay? And that is shown on the right side. That's, you know, kind of extreme case, but that's the idea that noise is added each pixel randomly, and that's called edited noise, okay? So then, you know, we have also uh, multiplicative noise. So instead of adding, so you actually basically, noise is multiplied to, to the pixel gray level, and you, know, you have the impact of that also. But most of noise are edited. So, um, so now, um, the you know how will you generate a noise like that image I show you it was generated um, synthetically so I have original image then I generated a noise using some distribution and generated a Gaussian distribution so again the Gaussian distribution which is a bell shaped curve you will hear a lot in this course and, and Gaussian is is very important um, concept which we will use in many different contexts. So right now we are talking about distribution. As you know, that you know, if you have data, you can find distribution, and most of the natural phenomena has a standard distribution, or Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution. That's you know, same. It, it looks like a bell shape, okay? Which means this is distributed around zero. It has a mean zero, and um, which means the 
highly probable value of the noise will be zero, no, no noise, okay? But then it will have some probability that it will have this much noise, this much noise, or negative this much noise, this much noise. It will be A date. It will have very small probability that the noise is very large. That's why it's going down, okay? After three standard deviation, it will die. Yeah, I mean, so any any noise, you know, you have to talk about distribution, and this we are talking about distribution. So it's a, it's a Gaussian noise, and we have distribution, and um, so you have to know what is the mean. It's a mean is zero, and what is the, you know, your, your standard deviation. So that's, you know, we want to talk about that. So now we can, you know, write a expression for the Gaussian. This is the expression for Gaussian. So this is the this is the um, n axis, which is a random noise n, as we, as we show n x y. And uh, so we can define this. Now this is the uh, zero mean. So normally we will have n minus x square upon two sigma square, but x you know the the mean is zero. So therefore we have only n square, and to the power. Uh, n square divided by 2 sigma square. So sigma is a standard deviation, yes. Does the n of the noise have anything to do with the g of n? Yeah, so g, I, g of n is a distribution of a random variable n. So we will take different value of n. We will put here, suppose if n is 0, this is 1, as you see. If n is 1, then it will be some value, and, and so on. So this actually, you can draw this curve by taking different values of n. It will look like that. Is that well, is that a? No, my question was more like we're using n in the front there, n of x of x comma y. We're using that to denote. It. Yeah. So so it's related to this. So see the here. Yeah, it's a little confusing notation, but let's look at this here. So what we are doing um, that um, probably I should you know. Because here we are trying to explain a couple of different concepts. So we are saying we have a pixel at x, y. Its value is i. We randomly add a noise to that at that pixel x, y, and we call it n. So that's a noise at pixel x. That noise has a distribution, which is n of, n of um, you know, g of n, and that is a Gaussian. So that's what I want to say. So these are, you know, couple of things kind of so so one is that any noise is a distribution and this is a Gaussian distribution and uh, then we have at each pixel we will randomly generate a noise using Gaussian Gaussian distribution whatever number we get we'll add to that and that's the what idea is and uh, as you know that you can generate a random number using your you know C program or MATLAB and so on like uh, RAN, R-A-N-D function in the, in the C will give you random number generator. You can give a range and so on. So you can add like that. Um, so the, that's the idea, okay? So this is, you know, we generated a Gaussian noise here. And uh, so that was a Gaussian distribution, normal distribution. Then there's a uniform distribution, which is equal likely, like if you flip a coin heads and tail, each is a half probability. If you throw a die, which has six possibilities, so probability is one upon six. So it's uniform. It doesn't make difference. Here, as you saw, it's not uniform. The, it's a high probability for the mean and very low from the when you go away from the mean. Okay. So these are different distribution. So um, so the for example, there's another noise which is called salt and pepper noise. So that has the uniform distribution that randomly with equal probability we will, you know, change the pixel to black or white. And that, you know, may look like that. So that is the salt and pepper noise, okay? The other one, the salt pepper, when you shake the salt and pepper, it looks white and black, so that's the name it is. Okay, so, um, so now the image filtering. So one thing I want to mention here, that due to internet and with all these resources, actually learning and teaching these days is very, very easy 
and in a way you can learn a lot very quickly and that's the technology is impacting. So for example for computer vision there are many professors all over the world they are putting their slides and everybody is benefiting and like I will be using some of the slides from other professor some professor will be using my my slides and always I will try to give a credit proper credit where I got that you know slide so that I think you are living in a wonderful age that where all these is possible you know when I was a graduate student we rarely had access to the copying machine so you know you have to pay a lot of money to get a one page and copying machines were very poor quality and all kinds of things and if you want a paper the library won't have that paper you have to request interlibrary loan from other city or state and it'll come a couple of weeks now you can just type in it's there so it's you know you should be, you are very fortunate you should you know enjoy it and you know learn more okay so um, this is a slide from uh, James says from Cornell and so uh, what he's saying that image filtering as I talk, talk to you that it's it's a filtering means it's computing a function of local neighborhood at position it's a very important concepts and used in improving uh, images in removing noise uh, increased contrast and it's also you know used for age detection we're going to talk about the texture determination distinct points and interest points and also template matching so all these concepts will come once we were very clear where what we mean by filtering or convolution or correlation okay so now you want to inject here this idea of the image derivatives then we'll come back how we can do these derivatives filtering in the same convolution framework so uh, now you know this from calculus that while derivative is a very important concept give you a rate of change of something okay so speed is rate of change of distance and the acceleration rate of change of speed um, and um, then other concepts mean or average is you take the set of numbers divided by num total number of values as average now derivative this uh, this uh, you know definition you learned in calculus you have a function f and you want to find out the value of that function the derivative of that function so you take the value of that function at x and take the value very close to x say maybe delta x minus or plus and find the difference and divide by delta x and you take uh, that delta x as small as possible so that it tends to zero and that is called the derivative that's called rate of change okay and it's then denoted by fx uh, or f prime x and, and so on so it's a pretty simple thing so therefore speed is rate of change of distance and acceleration rate of change of speed so now if you have the analytical expression of a function like this one so we have y squared plus x this is a function of x so we can differentiate it you you know that you know so it'll become 2x plus 4x cubed which is pretty simple and um, we can have sine x plus e to the power minus x derivative of sine is cos x and derivative of e to the minus x is same and then you differentiate minus x which will become minus 1 things like that it's, you, know, you have learned this thing now the problem is that you know images are discrete you know we, we don't have equations for images you know they're discrete they're numbers you know at each element we, you know of the array we have a number so therefore if you look at you want to find a derivative at particular pixel x then the next pixel so suppose given pixel is the pixel number two next pixel will be pixel number three that's the closest one there's no pixel between two and three okay so therefore delta x the smallest delta x you can take will be one so therefore this will simplify like that you take a pix value at x subtract it from the value at x minus one and divide by one which doesn't have to make a difference so it's like a peculiar difference and that's is called actually finite difference in, in math so you can find the derivative in the discrete domain like that and and that's you know what we are going to do so now um, 
the um, there are different variations of that you know like well in the first one we took the difference from the previous one x minus one that's called backward difference but we can do forward difference will be x plus one or we can do central difference which will be um, f x plus one and then other side f x minus one we find a difference between that and there are different variations of that and so on so um, now let's take an example in the one dimension case like this is a row from an image and the values are 10 15 10 and so on and this is f of x we want to find the derivative of that and we are going to apply this backward difference you know. so first thing is we are not able to find the derivative here because we don't have on the left side so we will maybe make it zero but we can find here so 15 minus 10 is 5 10 minus 15 is minus 5 10 minus 10 is 0 and so on so that's the first derivative of this it's pretty simple intuitive makes sense um, then we can find the second derivative of this so as you know the second derivative is first derivative of first derivative we differentiate again and again 0 here 5 minus 0 is 5 minus 5 minus 5 minus 10 0 minus minus 5 is 5 and so on so that's nice so we can do that and um, so now we will have some notion of the uh, filter or mask we will develop from here so actually what we are doing in this is we are kind of applying uh, a filter or a mask and that mask is one minus one because we if you center this here we multiply one by 15 and minus one by 10 and then add it up that's what we are doing we are actually going through that yes which one yeah this one this will be minus 20 yeah okay so can you can you remember this okay because people you know complain that I'm don't change this so uh, or can I just get out and change it right now it should be okay or not okay just make a note okay yeah you're that's good so you are actually following <laughs> okay so um, then we can apply forward difference and uh, you know the central difference um, now this was a one one dimension case it's maybe one row of an image but image is a two dimension okay so therefore this is the function is of two dimension f of x y instead of f of x so therefore we have a gradient vector so derivative of image is not a scalar one number but it is a vector it has two numbers one is a derivative with respect to x and others derivative with respect to y because it's a function of two variables and it is called partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y when we differentiate this with respect to x we keep y constant when you differentiate with respect to y we keep x constant and that's the way they are represented and this is fx fy the partial derivative with x and partial derivative with respect to y okay so now when you have vector you know it can have magnitude it have direction so we'll take fx square plus fx square under root and the direction will be tangent inverse fy upon fx you know you've learned that in vector you can find direction and magnitude and this will be very very useful we are going to use this a lot okay so now the if you do in two dimension um, we want to find the derivative of an image um, you know derivative of an image in x direction let's say so what should be that mask you know we, we want to ask and this is the possible mask now first is this is a two-dimensional mass even though we are finding derivative in x direction so in a way we can use this which is a central difference one on the left one on the right we subtract you know. but since the two dimension so it's better to find the difference in this row one on the top one on the right and add it up so we'll compute three differences and add it up divide by three will give you average 
and that is better derivative estimate at that pixel as compared to just looking at only one of them. So that is the filter or derivative mass. Finding the derivative in x direction easily extended from the one dimension case using the center difference, but doing this kind of averaging that looking at a one on the top row, one on the bottom row. Okay? It's a very simple concept. Now, um, then we can have same thing y, but now the difference will be in the y direction. As you see, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So again, we have three columns. So, and then we will sum it up and we will average. Okay? So then let's say this is an image and we want to find the derivative of that. And um, so what we are going to do, we will take a 3 by 3 neighborhood because our mass is 3 by 3. And suppose if you want to compute here, first as you, as you know that we are not able to compute at the border because we don't have the other side. So we'll compute first here, so we take a 3 by 3 mask here. And um, then um, comp apply, you know, the pixel by pixel, uh, these values, minus 1, 10, 0 with 10, 1 with 20, and minus 1, 10, and so on. Multiply these corresponding mass values, sum it up, divide by 3, and you are going to get the 10 here, okay? And um, this way, now let's say we want to compute this pixel. So we'll shift this. We'll take this by 3 by 3 number around this pixel. Again, take these corresponding values, multiply, and add it up, divide by 3, you will get this one. So that's the way we are going to go through one by one these pixels, and you can verify that. And I'll have, I'll have another example also for this from other professor and you can compute the derivative of this image, very twi image, uh, using this. And one is that the border are zeros, and then we can compute here like that. Okay? So um, that's a derivative in x direction, and we can compute derivative in y direction, again applying the difference in the columns. And, and as you see, that there's no change in the y direction because if I compute here 10 minus 10 is 0, 10 minus 10 is 0, 20 minus 20 is 20, 0, and all 0. So that's pretty simple. So now these you know operations what we have been talking about they can be formalized uh, in terms of correlation and convolution. So correlation is defined like here. We have f and h. We want to find the correlation of f h and this is the symbol we are going to use. So we have FKL and HKL, and this is a two loops. As you see, the mask is two dimension. We want to go through every row and every column from the mask and from the image. So that's what this expert, if you, if you apply this, you know, if you write a C program, that's what you will have two loops, you know, to do that, okay? And so F is an image, and K is a kernel or a mask or a filter. You know, all these names, you know, we'll be using interchangeably. So therefore, F is like this, say, and um, this is the correlation, this is the H, and we are going to multiply element by element. Um, so if you take this particular one, L will change, you know, 1, 2, 3. Then we'll have K, 1, 2, 3. So we'll have nine of these and this will be the sum of these. This is the application of that. If you expand this, is what you are going to get, okay? So that is, you can write down mathematically like this in two double summations, pretty simple idea here. And that's called correlation, okay? So now there's another concept, convolution, which is very similar, many times like they are the same, uh, and, um, but there's some difference. Uh, convolution, we are going to represent this with this star, no circle. And the only thing here is, as you notice, is minus k minus l as compared to here, there was k l. So, yes? Then the symbol is wrong there, right? For the equation? Yeah, for this one, is this? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Star there. Yeah, can you note that, please? Yeah, I'm serious. You know, we need to change those things. 
Okay, so um, and there will be some more of these because, <laughs> because at the end, see, we'll find out that many cases they are actually the same. There's no difference, especially Gaussian, and, and this is you know um, people kind of treat them equally. But you're right to be more precise. We need to, especially the first lecture. Okay, so that's that. So convolution is just minus k minus l. And so what that does mean, that this is our mask, our filter. So we are going to flip x minus x means we want to flip that. And uh, that will become like this. You know, as you see here, that uh, we have flipped around the x-axis. Okay, So we have here h1 to h9. Now we have taken these and put it here. So H7, H8, H9 like this. And we have taken these and put it here. And this, of course, remains the same because we are flipping around that axis, x-axis. So that's first. Then we are going to do, you are going to flip again in the y. Now we are going to flip in the you know, vertical direction. So these things will become here and these will become there. So that's what we have, H7, H4, H1 here, and H9, H6 there. So we are going to apply this mask to the F as compared to the, this mask, and that's the difference, okay? And um, so then we have the F, and then we will have this one. Again, you know, these need to be fixed. So as you see, that this is different than what we had here um, in the in the correlation. See, there it was, you know, like this, but now we have here because of flipping. So it's actually 180 degrees rotation. You know, we are rotating this. Now, what will happen? Some mask actually they will be symmetric. If if um, say this was exactly the same as this, or this was exactly the same as this, it will not make a difference if you flip. And that's why in those cases, like Gaussian is like that. It's a symmetric, okay? It's a rotationally symmetric, an x, y. So that's why then correlation convolution with Gaussian is the same thing. There's no difference, okay? But some cases will make a difference, okay? So now, you know, there are these properties of um, uh, these convolution and correlation. Convolution is associative, uh, which means that if I take um, the um, G, convolve with I, and then take the result and convolve with F, it's exactly the same if I take F and convolve with G and take the result and convolve with I. To associate. I can associate these. So it's no problem. Um, and um, mean. The other concept is mean. As everybody knows, you take the numbers, divide by, take the sum, and divide by n. Now another interesting concept is called weighted mean. That you know this is a uniform weighted mean. The first one, standard mean. Here we will apply weight to each element. Each element may contribute different to the sum and divide by the number of elements, okay? So now we looked at earlier Gaussian as a distribution, it's probably distribution that we can add a noise to the image using the Gaussian distribution. It's a random number. Now Gaussian also is a filter, so it's a very different use of Gaussian or standard deviation or bell curve. So Gaussian is a filter, and um, that's a very good filter. And actually what it does is does the weighted averaging. It's an averaging filter, but it's a weights. And the weights are assigned according to this bell curve. The central pixel will get high weight. If you go away from the center, you get lower and lower weights. So that's the idea of Gaussian filter. Okay, so this uh, expression of Gaussian, as I told you before, and in 2D it looks like that, and that's expression. So instead of x, we'll have x squared plus y squared upon 2 sigma squared. In both x is the same standard deviation, and again, zero mean. So that's the filter. 
Now we can generate this filter out of mask as we generate a mask for derivative. We can generate for this taking different values of x here and assuming the value of sigma, say sigma is 1, then take x is equal to 0, it will become 1, which is this one. If x is 1, this will become minus 1 upon 2, 6. If x is 2, become minus 4 upon 2, which will become minus 2, which will become 0.13. If x is 3, it will become 9 divided by 2, 4.5 e to the power minus 4.5 is 0 0.001. So these are the values you can generate for the mask for the Gaussian filter. Okay, if you plot it, it will look like that here. And so these you can relate to the values we had for the difference. Okay, and um, again the process will be same that when we apply Gaussian filter, we apply the corresponding value of the mass to the image and multiply, 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 and then add it up. So that's the Gaussian filter. Okay? So the sigma is 1. So property of Gaussian, uh, now Gaussian is, so Gaussian, you know, it's from um, the Carl Gauss, was a very famous mathematician and physicist in Germany. He was, you know, prodigy, you know. Even he was a kid, I mean, he used to, you know, amaze his, his teachers and figure out all the things, you know, before he was 14 years old. And um, so this function, the Gaussian function, is after him. He came up with this, uh, this function, that there's this symmetric function. This is, you know, has lots of properties. And so Gaussian distribution, the bell curve, and so on. So, so as you know, that you can take any population, you can find the distribution. And somehow most of the natural phenomena can be represented by Gaussian distribution. You know, which means if I take the height of people in this room, then it will be Gaussian distribution. There will be average height, maybe 5 feet, you know, 8 inches. I'm 5 feet 8. I'm average. There will be some short. You know, very few, some very tall. You know, if I take take in you know, IQ here, there'll be again Gaussian distribution. If you look at many many phenomena in nature, most of them are the Gaussian distribution. And um, there's a very interesting theorem in math called central limit theorem that if you take any distribution, as you know there are many distributions, we already talk about uniform distribution, like flipping coin is a f uniform distribution, throwing a dice is uniform distribution, equal likely if, if it is not biased. But if you take um, many random variables with any distribution, if you have enough, lot of them, you average and the sum, the average will approach to Gaussian distribution. So actually, to generate a Gaussian distribution in C, you have to generate several, you know, uniform distribution and add it up and that will give Gaussian distribution. So Gaussian distribution is very powerful distribution and can represent many different um, um, distribution population. So um, now we are looking at here as a filter. So it is a smooth function, and um, also it has infinite number of derivatives. You can differentiate that. First derivative, second derivative, you keep going, and we're going to do that next lecture. Um, it is symmetric, as you see, one on the left, one on the right, it's you know, also in two dimensions symmetric, yes? And other thing is called Fourier transform. If you look at the Gaussian in the frequency domain, then it will look like a Gaussian. Okay. Other property is that if you take a Gaussian and convolve it with itself, there will be again a Gaussian, but a bigger Gaussian, which is also interesting. And um, it's a separable that, you know, you saw that we can have a mask, which is a 2D, like 3x3 three three or 7x7. Seven seven. So to convolve with a 2D mask for 3x3, three three, we have to, every pixel we have to do 9 multiplication because there are nine elements, yes? Now, for the Gaussian, what you can do, 
just apply the mask in every row, 1D mask, which is say 3, get the result, then apply on the column, then it's same as you have applied a 2D mask. So in this case you are doing 9, here you are doing 6. So that's another property, we are going to talk about that. And the most interesting thing is that there are in your brain, the cells, there are these neurons. Their function is, the shape is very similar to Gaussian, or Laplacian of Gaussian, and they are actually doing this filtering which we are going to talk about. It. So it's very interesting. And the people who found that, you know, from Harvard University, they actually got a Nobel Prize. We are going to talk about that. Okay, so, so filtering, the idea is that we uh, will take an um, um, image, a small neighborhood image, and we will modify the pixel based on some function. So here are the pixel 3 by 3 neighborhood, and we did something, I think it's average, um, maybe not average, something, and we replace in the new image, which is called filtered image, by this value, okay? and this can be in any operation. So, um, so the, these are linear filter because we are just multiplying and, um, and then summing up, up. So we have an image here. Let's say kernel or mask is like this. So this is, you know, kind of central different, but here we have 0.1. So we can, you know, take this mask center it here, one, min one multiply by one, zero multiply by three, this multiply by zero, it's two, and all this, sum it up, we'll get five. That's a filter output of this image with this kernel or mass. Okay, so that's, you know, we are going to keep doing that thing. So, yes? Do you, how do you treat the corners? Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. That's a good question. So, now, the, this is a trivial example. Now our filter here is, is doing nothing, right? So it's looking at three by three neighborhood, taking the center value, just repeating. So that's what we have. But this is also a filter. We can do that. And here, what it's doing? Here it's shifting. So we're taking the three by three neighborhood, but we are taking the value on here, right side, we're replacing here. And so it's kind of, it will shift in the X direction. Uh, here is averaging, you know, taking values 9 and divide by 9. And here, instead of 3 by 3, we can take 5 by 5. We can take any number. Um, so here, 25 values, we divide by 25, okay? And this is your Gaussian filter. And uh, so as you saw here, the weights are same. This is averaging, and this is the weighted averaging. The weights are different depending on where you are, the center pixel has the highest weight, yes? Okay, so now this is the smoothing. If you apply the, the Gaussian filter to every pixel, you'll get this on the left. If you do the, the other filter, the averaging filter, you'll get on the right. So in general, the one on the left is better because you are not smoothing too much and you are only giving importance to the central pixel where you want to compute. Other pixels, you know, value is reduced. Okay? So, um, like that. Now, um, so this is a noisy image. Now we can remove the noise, do the averaging, or we can do Gaussians there. So Gaussian will be a little better than simple averaging. Um, so, again, these slides are from other professor, and just, you know, same thing. Um, so this average uh, filter is called box filter. It looks like a box. And uh, we have 3 by 3, and um, we divide the sum by 1 upon 9. So it's a very nice example, just to, you know, make sure that you guys understand. So we have F. This is our filter. We want to get from here the H. So let's say we want to, and this is your formula, and then we look at this neighborhood, and uh, then at this pixel we want to find out the value. Okay? So that will become zero. 
because all these are zero here. Then let's say we want to find this one. So again, we center three by three mass there. It'll become 10 because there are 90 here, 90 divided by nine, and nine is 10, and so on. So you can do this, and suppose here, um, these are the values, here are zeros and 90. So what do you think the value should be here? Question, can you do summation quickly? Okay, so you know, it's, you can do these things. So that's the way that you're applying mass. So your program will do that, okay? So that's nice. Um, so what does it do? Um, so as you see, that's replacing each pixel with the average of neighborhood, achieve smoothing effect, you know, remove sharp features. So here's an example, good example. So um, on the left is original image, and on the right it's the filtered image. And as you see, it is, it's kind of blurring, you know, it's, it's doing that. So here is the, you know, small uh, piece of image, and um, this is doing shifting. So as I said, told you that, you know, take a pixel. No, it's not doing shifting. Actually, it's just repeating. It's just taking the pixel itself, okay? And uh, no change. So this is going to do shifting. So as you see here, it's a little shifted. Can you can you tell me who is this guy? The eye of Einstein. You can tell. Okay. Okay. So so this one is you know there are two filters. Once you do this and then you do this, and this sharpening, so it'll become like this. I do have a question. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. What? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So note down that thing. I think we will tell these guys there's a mistake here. Yeah, you know, or, or you can put um, one here, then it'll be right. Okay. Hmm? So suppose you are here. Now you have a you you don't have here because of the one on the right side there's no pixel. So that's why you put a blank here. Suppose you are here and uh, you can put a three by three window here and uh, typically you will have a blank here because you don't have there. But since the pixel on the right side you are taking which is okay. So there's no mistake. That is right. Okay. So, um, so that's you know sharpening we talk about, and this is before and after, so it become a little sharp. And there are other filters, and we're going to talk about that. This is um, this is the. Um, tell me what is this filter? What is it doing? A detection. It's finding the derivative in what direction. The difference in x direction, okay? There's actually sub L, you know, detector, and we find the vertical vertical edges like that. If you apply this filter to that, you'll get like that. Yeah, and the um, <clears throat> now this value, the when you will get output, you know, it can be negative, positive. So to display, you have to make everything positive, absolute, so that's what you're seeing here. So some will be negative edges, some will be positive edges. Um, so this is the other direction, and this absolute value in the horizontal edge. And this is smoothing with Gaussian, and um, so this is the left is the original image, and right is the image you get. And this is by box filter, so that's averaging, and this is a Gaussian which is weighted averaging, so Gaussian is a little better. Um, so the key properties of filters are, as we talk about, that, uh, you know, you can, you know, take, um, say, F1 and F2 and sum it up and apply a filter, or you can apply a filter F1 separately and F2 separately and add them up, so they are linear, that's why linear filters. Also, the shift invariance, which means you can take the 
image and shift it and then apply the filter or you can filter first and shift it the same okay and these are the properties of the convolution the equation we talk about um, and uh, more properties that they are commutative as we mentioned earlier that you can um, do the um, the there's no difference you know between filter and signal you can treat them equally if you know and you can have a b or b a you can change the order and um, they are associative we already talked about that that you can convolve b with c and then a or a with b and then c and um, they are distributive you know so you can add these and then convolve or you know you can convolve separately and then add it up um, then also the scale is no problem um, that you can convolve a b and then multiply by k or you can um, um, put a k here or you can convolve first and multiply by k so it's just a multiplying scalar with every every element and of course the identity which means you, know, you do nothing so it has that property you know it's one of the filter was the so center pixel was one okay so then now there's another filter which is interesting it's called median filter um, that um, filter is not linear filter you know it's a in a way non-linear filter and what it does look at the neighborhood and take the pixel values and sort them in and then find the median median as you know is a number half of the numbers are above that half of numbers are below that that's median so median actually is a better uh, property of any population as compared to mean you know that's why when they talk about say well what's the median population of say Orlando I mean median age or median income salary so that gives you a better idea but if you do the average then that will be very misleading because there be you know some people will be out of your salary some people will be very low you add it up you know you get a very bad you know not a good idea but median tells you how many are above that number how many are below that so that actually is good and median is a good to you know use for the noise random noise because a robust because if the if there's a numbers set of numbers if any number is changed randomly a little bit median will not change that much but the mean will change a lot because you are going to eight you know and divide so so median filter is shown here so we have um, some image so apply mean filter you get like this and Gaussian you will get like this and median will be like that so we have learned three filters yes In the slide, was a question. Is the median a kind of convolution? no it's not it's not convolution as you as you see that see because you are looking at three by three window numbers and you have to find the median as you know you have to sort the numbers and then pick the middle one so you, this will take more time uh, as compared to simple convolution okay so so you see that you know there are these different results and these different rows represents the different size of window you, know, you can do the mean three by three nine pixel five by five and you can do you know seven by seven so they are different so when you look at a bigger number a little more smoothing out okay so so now let's look at these some MATLAB functions which will you know help you to implement these things and um, so so one uh, function is called conv and this is a 1d convolution and um, so this will be con a b and here you have vector a and vector b and will apply the convolution operation that get the result put in c okay so that is pretty simple now they have a con 2 which will do in two dimension you know as we have been talking about you can take a row of an image treat as a one dimension but image is two dimension so con 2 again has same syntax a b 
and perform 2D convolution of met now input here are not a vector but matrices. So you can treat an image as a matrix, okay? Array, 2D array are a matrix. Uh, that's why MATLAB is very good for uh, images because everything in MATLAB is a matrix. Well, that's why it's called MATLAB. And so it can do these operations very quickly, just, just do everything on a whole matrix. As compared to in C, you have to go through each element and so on. So um, now there's another command called filter2, and uh, it's a two-dimensional two digital filter. And uh, it is like this. So B and X, okay? Uh, data is in X and um, with 2D filter, which is in B. So B is a matrix, which is a filter, and X is a also image, and it's gonna apply that and do this in just one shot. It'll give you the result, the filter result in Y, okay? And um, now it will compute this using convolution and the size will be of the same as the X. And um, if, of course, we'll do most of the work using the um, 2D correlation. Um, and as we talk about the correlation convolution, they are related, the only they are one is you have to rotate 180 degrees because of that um, flip thing. We talk about X and Y. When you rotate, flip it X 90 degrees and flip again Y so another 90 degrees, so 180 degrees. And um, so another command in MATLAB is called gradient, which will compute the approximate gradient. And it is like this, gradient of F so I'll return the numerical values in two fx and fy. And um, fx correspond to the first derivative with respect to x, and fy correspond to the first derivative with respect to y. Okay? And um, mean, of course, you know, you know, compute the mean of the array. So given the x, it'll find the mean of that. And um, there's another um, command called spatial. You can create a filter yourself, a 2D filter, and it will be H. It will put that filter in H matrix and type. You can specify what kind of filter you want. So if you want average filter, you just put average, it'll generate that. You know, you, we talked about, you know, say three by three or five by five. Gaussian. Um, is, you know, just put a Gaussian compute Gaussian filter and Laplacian is another filter which we'll talk about uh, next lecture, 2D Laplacian of Gaussian filter. It's also called LOG. One is a Laplacian filter, other is called Laplacian of Gaussian, two different filters. And Previt is another derivative mass edge detector. Sabel we just saw and um, so one example will be, let's say you want to generate a Gaussian filter, then you have to specify what's the standard deviation, and you have to specify the size, how big the mask you want, seven by seven. And um, the, you can ask why seven by seven, you know, can you do three by three, or you know, 100 by 100, if you have Gaussian of sigma one, why seven by seven will be good? Of sigma one, three sigma, that's right, see? So you have heard about three, three sigma rule, that if you have a bell-shaped curve, after three sigma, 99% of the thing will disappear, okay? So if the sigma is one, then you need three on this side, three on this side, one in the center, you want seven. That's the reason. Now, if you if you put here, say, four, I mean, five, or let's say you put three, so you won't get a full Gaussian. You'll cut it, okay? That's, that's very important. Suppose if sigma is two, then you want at least 13 by 13 because three sigma on this side, three sigma on this side, okay? 
So that is the idea. So, um, so some special matters um, and um, the and uh, I think this talks about the same issue. How big should be the filter? And it should be you know three sigma and um, practical matters. So um, that you know because what what you do when as she was asking you know what you do for the border and how you clip and so on so that's what it is talking about this so you can put you know the black borders as we were doing we're putting zeros you know because we don't have the other side or you can wrap around or you can do copy and reflect and so on so that's what's going to talk about this so this is you know black this will be something like that and um, this is the your one of those yeah wrap around and um, this is going to cut yeah okay so it, what is this here is showing average filter or something other Gaussian eh? because this one oh sorry so it's a little blurry, so it's applying some Gaussian filter to that, and uh, like that. So I think he has a very nice uh, figure here. So these are the MATLAB um, commands. So so there's another another command called IM filter, uh, very similar to the other we talked about. So you can specify that you want a circular, you know, wrap around, you want. Uh, copy edge, you want a symmetric, you know, all these things are there you can specify. So, and I think this figure is nice here. So this will be that, you know, you can say filter 2 and you want the, um, um, specify what shape you want. You want a full, uh, which will be like this. So the resultant image, filtered image will be It'll be a sum of the size of f and g so it'll be here you know if the f is here there'll be additional one here and if you say the same so the f the filtered image will be of the same size of f but if you say the valid then it will be actually a difference between f and g size so it will be a smaller one so that's you know different things you can specify to deal with these uh, border issues okay so, so all that I think you uh, can um, learn um, from this chapter two. I go through many of these uh, in detail. Um, from my, this is also available on the course website. It's a free book, and this is uh, another book from Dirk Zaleski. So these are the two sections uh, you can look at.